Today I'm going to take us through some of the extra controls and media centre functions in the new Volkswagen E-Golf. The E-Golf has a really handy configuration wizard that comes up after the car's been reset. Um, it's really useful because it means you can go through step by step and set up some of the key functions for the car nice and quickly as soon as you've got it. So this is the, the wizard screen that comes up um, uh, a short while after you've turned the car on after after doing a reset. Um, and you just go from one, one, to one end to the other. So in here you would input the, the name that you want to call your car or your, your name, whatever you want to call it. It can be your user account. Click next, it will then go on to the next one which is your time and date. Um, this will auto set, however you can also, you know, you can change how it's viewed to sort of so on a 12 hour clock for example, whatever you prefer. Um, the, the preset thing for the radio, I think it's actually better done through the radio menu, so we'll, we'll do that there a bit later. Pairing your phone up, obviously really handy to do thing, one of the first things most people do. Uh, so all you do to pair your phone is um, get your phone up uh, and search for the, the Volkswagen through your Bluetooth menu. It's actually Reese's phone. So yeah, it's having a little search. It's identified the Volkswagen there. Click on that. They do their checks. Click pair on here. Click yes on the screen. Click allow on here. And then the two will sync together. And your phone is paired. Okay, so now the phone's all paired up we can go on uh, and set the home address uh, for the sat-nav. Um, obviously you can click in and put the actual address or if you happen to be at home just click current position and it will just store it as your home address. Couldn't be simpler. Okay. Right, the, the very last one is something called Carnet which is sort of the online services for your, um, your e-golf. Um, a lot of people won't bother setting this up, however, um, it does mean when you're connected to the internet you can uh, like download map up updates, um, it'll update sort of charge points, things like that. So there's some useful things there, there's a, a clunky old browser. Um, in order to set it up, we won't, we won't do it now because there's also stuff you have to do on the computer as well. We'll just click the online configuration wiz wizard, um, run through the steps. Uh, and then you need to go onto the computer, log onto Carnet, put in your VIN number, that sort of thing, and give you a registration code, which you'll then put in here when you log in. A little bit of a process, but if you follow the instructions on the wizard, that's no problem. Since we're already getting things set up in the media center, I may as well go through some of the other media center functions while we're at it. And I must say the eGolf has a really nice, slick media center system. Okay, um, obviously you've got buttons around the uh, around the screen, but for the sake of simplicity and doing things in order, if you click the menu button, it brings up all of the options, and I'm just going to go through them one by one. Uh, start off with, we'll go through radio. So, the radio brings up the uh, no, radio menu. Um, bring up your station list by clicking on there. Um, you'll notice initially on the digital station list, not all of them are showing, but if you click D1 National, it brings them all up. Let's pick something, I don't know, uh, there you go, smooth chill, there we go. So obviously no playing smooth chill. Um, obviously in order to store, um, you've got loads of different uh, presets uh, you can go on it. So to, ch to store something, have the station you want playing there and just press and hold the preset and that becomes chill. Obviously you can change from digital to FM, things like that. Obviously as you scroll along through different stations there, obviously you can scroll along through all your different preset settings. So that's the radio menu. Uh, next up is the telephone button. Uh, in here is where you would, um, uh, it, you would pair up your phone. Uh, obviously we've already done it with Reese's phone. Um, you can contacts brings up the contact list we won't dwell on that too much because of Reese's contacts you can click to dial a number um, in terms of storing sort of some favorite numbers here you've got six presets here uh, to do so you just click on that and then you can just select uh, select the number then we'll put Dick Lovett on there yeah and that's stored there uh, if you haven't uh, used the wizard to uh, pair your phone, where you go to to pair it up is settings, which is these little bits down here, then click select mobile phone, then find mobile phone, and then you follow the same process as described before. So get your Bluetooth searching, 
for the Volkswagen and then pair it up following the on-screen instructions. Okay, then we've got the media button, obviously you can access from the screen as well, just like the radio, and that brings up whatever's playing off of Reese's phone, as it turns out it's busted. Um, you could choose different things, so obviously it's connecting to Bluetooth and playing from that, but you can say you had a pen stick installed, which um, you install in there, you would click USB, um, that will bring that up. Um, obviously you can use the steering wheel controls to change between things, um, all very straightforward sex shuffle play, random that sort of thing, we click in settings, there's some few bits and bobs in there, the most useful thing being the sound menu which is where you can adjust your, you know, your treble and your, your bass for example, however there are other places you can do that also which we'll go on to. Uh, next up is vehicle which on the out of the screen actually is referred to as car but obviously within the, the menu functions it's referred to as vehicle. Loads to go through here so we'll, we'll make our way through step by step. Okay, it, um, when you first run it, it defaults to vehicle status, which, you know, if there's any alerts, it would say on there, and it's um, you know, where you can sort of check your tyre pressures. This little screen down here brings up some different options. So obviously that was vehicle status. Um, think blue trainer. <laughs> um, it's another sort of EV kind of display. Also, it's not showing much because it's been reset, but it shows driving data for people who kind of like that sort of thing. Um, if we click on Think Blue as well, it also then gives you um, a whole list of you know EV driving tips, which I guess for the first time EV owner owner could be useful. Uh, driving data brings up a variety of screens here. So this is how much uh, you know your stats, if you like, since you last charged the car, um, since the start of the journey, um, since its last long-term reset. Um, things like that, so that's all the things there. E-displays, again, once you're driving and things like that, gives you a variety of, of different um, sort of EV-based display screens. Um, let's see if we turn the, uh, the heating system off, you can see how much uh, it affects the sort of the, the range. It's saying it's a difference of 15 miles over the whole charge of the battery. Um, Obviously the car stationary, but this, this graphic will show uh, as you're driving, power going out the battery to the motor, as you're regen braking, power going back from the, the motor into the battery. You know, it's just EV stuff. You know, it's quite fun, I suppose, not necessarily particularly useful. Uh, the next button along is the e-manager, which is a really useful place because that's where you can set the car to precondition and warm itself up uh, before you leave for work on a cold day. So if I press the e-manager button, it brings up your departure time settings. Um, if we, if you want to, there's three separate departure times you can set, um, which could be different times within the same day, but however for most people it's when you leave it for work at different times during the week. Uh, but to set one, click on the little arrow there, um, say you get to have a nice line and you leave for work at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, and you do that for Monday through to Friday, just click the set the specific ones, and then that's just all set. Now if you click settings at the top you can also set the temperature which you want your car to warm up to uh, in the morning. So uh, 21 degrees, nice temperature to be set to. There you go. Um, if you wanted to set your car to charge on a cheap overnight tariff for example, um, you click in this charging locations bit. Um, what you'll do, you can set additional charging locations. Um, so. Uh, like I say, you want different profiles for different places depending on when you're charging. Maybe you want to charge during the work somewhere else. Um, but if you click here at the end, it brings up this little section at the bottom which says off peak power. Give a click on that and then it will bring up these, these times here. So it might be you might want to start charging at uh, midnight through to I don't know, 4 a.m. or whenever your, your cheap overnight tariff is. You just change it to that and then that's set. You know, to override it, just click off peak power there. Or there's a little button in the uh, in the charge flap you can press as well, which will override any charging profile that's been set up. Okay, this little music symbol here brings up media, which brings up this little little screen here. As you can see, it's still playing busted off of Reese's phone, um, and that that will display in amongst all the other screens. So you can see what you're playing uh, at the same time as having everything else on screen. Last of all. 
we've got this settings button here. Um, there's loads of things in here, uh, too much to kind of go through. Most of which you'll just leave at their default settings, but you can you can kind of go through and alter things. Uh, lights, for example, I don't know, do you, like, coming home lights, how long the lights stay on after you've switched the car off to help you get home. Um, opening and closing, we've got auto locking, things like that, whether you like the car to auto lock. Um, servicing, how long it is till your next service. Lots of things in there. Carnet button is for setting up Carnet just like we did at the start. Navigation, is your sat nav? Uh, obviously you can get that through the nav button on the outside there. To program in a destination, click on new destination, pop in your postcode, the postcode for here, brings it up, click on it, you can option to store it as well, so you can store it and call it, uh, call it work, can't spell, there we go, work, okay, then click start, the routes are being calculated, please select a route, comes up with um, a few different options, whether you want the, um, sort of your eco route, your, um, quickest route or your shortest route option um, obviously we're here so you can't see them so you can so that's nice for sort of selecting um, as we move along you could have stored destinations there so we'll select that one for argument's sake um, points of interest please make a u-turn uh, I like this points of interest menu there is another one um, but this brings up the ones you actually need charging station a car park somewhere to eat View, you can change the, um, the view from sort of 2D to 3D, for example, however you prefer to have it. Um, sort of automatic, um, we can put it back to day screen so it brightens up again. I will actually put it back to auto though. Um, media, just like on the other screen, just brings up a little, oh, bust is still playing there, but yeah, it brings up a, a little media screen, shows what you're playing whilst you've still got the sat nav going. Announce very handy because obviously you can turn off and on the, um, the, the sort of spoken directions. Um, if you're trying to find another point of interest that isn't covered in this menu, or not one of the obviously useful ones, click on route, uh, click on enter destination, then you've got this little button here, click on that, um, and then you click on points of interest there, and then you just type in there something you want to find, um, I don't know, airport. For example, well, I need an airport right now, there we go, and there you go, it brings up Bristol Airport, so then you click on it and it will navigate to it, just like another navigational destination. Um, App Connect, that's what you would press to um, set your phone up via um, Android Auto or Apple, Apple CarPlay. Uh, Mirrorlink is obsolete now of course, um, but um, I won't run through that now in this video, but you obviously need to plug in your phone press the button and follow the instructions. Um, traffic, that brings up traffic reports in the area, that's quite useful. Um, over here, Volkswagen Media Control, uh, you'll need to have your phone connected to the internet for the, not your phone, your, your car connected to the internet. Sound, another place where you get to adjust your, your, your bass and your treble, that kind of thing. Um, Images, I often wonder why these things are, are there on a car's computer, but if you wanted to look at pictures on your um, on your media screen, you can select to do so via um, you know, SD card or the USB. Um, not that I can imagine anyone really needing to do that. Um, air conditioning, interestingly enough, that brings up uh, a touch screen control of all the heating controls, so you can control the temperature, for example, in your passenger seat. Um, you can turn that down. Uh, you can turn the, build the whole system off. Um, things like that. Uh, last of all, your settings. Again, lots of various bits. Uh, another place is to enter, get into uh, Carnet, for example. The, that configuration wizard that was very useful at the start lives in there as well. So a couple of little bits and pieces. You can also get to that phone Bluetooth menu up there as well. But that covers all of those menu buttons.
Uh, now I'm going to go through the driver facing controls, starting with the steering wheel controls. Okay, on the left hand side of the steering wheel is your adaptive cruise control buttons. Uh, to bring that up, you press this button here. Uh, you would then press the top button to select adaptive cruise control, obviously it's already set, so that's me deactivating it. Uh, then when you want to set your cruise control, you just click the set button. You can then use the buttons here to increase and decrease the, um, uh, the speed limit for the cruise control. You set this button here to then alter the space you like to leave between you and the car in front, which will vary according to the speed you're traveling at. Um, obviously that will then get overridden if you press the foot on the brake. To resume where you were, you just press resume. Uh, media controls are split across both sides of the steering wheel. You've got your volume controls on the left, uh, and then you've got your, your, sort of your track skipping on the right hand side. Uh, while we're over here, obviously we've also got a um, voice activation controls button there. Um, if you like using those systems, they can be very frustrating, but obviously you give that a press and then you command the car um, to find a destination, look up someone's number, um, find a track even or a radio station. That actually isn't too bad in the e-golf, however, it is, it's a bit too much of a struggle to actually do it on camera because it never quite cooperates. Now, these last little remaining buttons over here relate to the menu screen, well not menu screen, display screen here in the centre of the dash. Um, more or less everything you can do on that media centre you can kind of to a degree access through here. Now the silver parts either side of the OK scroll through the different menu options. Um, so we've got audio for example, um, driving data. Driving data is actually quite a useful one so we'll, we'll focus on that. Um, to select driving data, you would then click OK. Uh, and then you've got these arrow buttons will then scroll through the different menu buttons, or different options if you like, that fall within that menu. Um, I, I find um, distance quite useful. So if you click on that, it's so, so since start of this journey, or you press OK, it'll scroll through more. So since charging, I find quite a useful one, so I can track how far I'm actually getting out of my car, rather than relying on its range predictor, um, and and so on. So like I say, you can scroll left and right through all these these other things: um, audio, phone, uh, vehicle state, driving data, your um, adaptive cruise control, navigation. It's also quite a nice one to have there on screen, because obviously it gives you um, it's like a head-up display almost, uh, and then the view button seems to scroll between the last thing you used and the current thing you have selected. Uh, but that's basically how those controls work. Have a little play while you're driving, but fundamentally, it's another way of controlling the controls of the media center. Next, we've got the uh, the two stalks behind the steering wheel and the light controls just down to the right. Just to the right of the steering wheel here are the is the headlight controls. Uh, so a dial. Turn that, you've got to put it onto auto lights, which is what I tend to leave it set to myself. Um, side lights, lights uh, sort of permanently on, if you like, and fog lights, you get to by pulling that out. Uh, the other headlights controls are over on the stalk on the left hand side, um, which you know you, is obviously indicators, but uh, go full beams. Or to flash full beams, pull it towards you, permanent full beams, push it away, and then to return it, pull it back to you. Obviously, you've got your wipers on the right hand side, um, uh, front screen wash, you pull it forwards, rear wipers, you push it back, push and hold for rear wipers uh, and uh, rear washer. Uh, and then you obviously click upwards to go to intermittent and low and high and you've got your various settings there just by pushing it up and obviously a little fine tuning thing on the top. Although the heating system can be controlled through the media centre as I showed you earlier, it can be controlled by the more traditional buttons which I'll go through now. Well, the heating system is controlled just here. Um, you press auto to turn it on. Um, then obviously you use the dials here to set the uh, temperature to whatever you like. It's got dual climate control, so you've uh, got the passenger side over here. Um, 
the direction in which the air is being blown is controlled by these buttons here. Um, so there you go, you can press it so it blows through all of them. Um, the centre controls the fan speed as well. Uh, and if you press this menu button, it actually brings up what I showed you before on the media centre. And actually in here, the, the car's actually got a heated windscreen. Um, so if you, can, if you need to, you can press that on in a cold and frosty day. It's only accessible via that. Um, you've also got your front screen demisters and your rear screen demisters over here. As I always say with any electric car in particular, obviously because it does take power from the battery, um, make sure you switch it off once it's clear to preserve your battery range. Last of all, there's just a couple of buttons to show you just around the gear selector. Uh, this button here uh, turns off the uh, parking sensor beepers. Um, there we go. More useful on. Um, this button here will turn off the um, sort of the pedestrian warning sound, the car sort of uh, electric motor sound generator. Uh, again, probably still best left on. Um, last one is genuinely a useful useful button. This is sort of like your eco button, if you like, on, on cars. It allows you to select the different modes in the car. Uh, obviously, it defaults to normal, which is what you'll spend most of your time driving on. You press it a second time, it will go through to eco, which will reduce the power of the electric motor and reduce the effectiveness of the heating and the aircon system a little bit to help uh, give you a better range. Uh, you press it a third time, it goes to eco plus. Uh, which will reduce the power of the motor again and more or less completely disable the heating system which will generally give you quite a bit of extra range. Uh, however those modes you'll only ever use really if you're pushing the car to the very limits of its range. Well I hope that was useful. Hopefully combined with our handover video we've gone through all the functions of your new car. Um, remember we're at the end of the phone uh, or emails if you have any other queries. Otherwise thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoy your new Volkswagen Eagle. Thank you.